Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is a Q&A episode, and as you can tell, I'm feeling a lot better this time. And so, and so I'm still not quite 100% totally yet, but I'm actually getting there. And so uh, I'm getting pretty close to being 100% in health-wise, and so I am should be getting should be doing these episodes much, much better this time. So let's actually get down to it, shall we? So we'll start off with a YouTube question. Lootzilla, what if a... <clears throat> Tunnel Jaguar met a Deinonychus. Well, first, well, I mean, first and foremost, these two animals have never met each other. They're in separate timelines. Of course, you're talking about a modern-day animal and, of course, an, ex an extinct uh, reptorial dinosaur. And so, how would they actually uh, have met each? How would they have if they had met? Well, first of all, all predators, all different kinds of predators, avoid each other, and so they would rather not actually go on with a comp confrontation. So, first things first, all predators want to make sure is that they are fully healthy uh, when they're ready to go hunting. And so that's pretty much what they're designed for. But when they go against other members of their own species, then that can, can cause some confrontation. Uh, like, look at lions. Lions, always, lions actually do fight each other uh, from time to time. But they really want to avoid actually getting injured. But it's the male lions that will actually get injured a lot more when they're actually fighting with each other. So the males tend to usually suffer some pretty significant injuries uh, when it comes to fighting, like broken bones, uh, got some scratches, some uh, big deep wounds from like the teeth and the claws. I mean, you name it. It's just that when predators meet another predator, they don't attack each other. They actually just leave each other alone and just going like, all right, you have this territory, I have my territory. You know, that's pretty much what they're going to be doing. But uh, Deinonychus would actually possibly look at the jaguar a little bit more as possibly food, but I would probably say it would probably look more like it's okay. Okay, it's a predator. It's not going to confrontation. Just, just, just do. Let's just do what we do. You know, just you got your side, I got my side, and that sort of thing. Jordy from Kentucky. So, did dinosaurs have arthritis? I believe they do. Yes, they do. Uh, there is a bit of uh, uh, speculation on, like, say, uh, that one part of Sue's tail. Uh, there's two vertebrae that are kind of almost fused together. And so, some paleontologists believe that could be arthritis, but. From looking at how the bones are kind of fused together, I would probably say that it's pretty much more likely that that's an injury, like a big devastating injury. Like she probably got, like the t that T-Rex got stepped on right on that type of, that part of the tail. And so that would really hurt, you know. And of course, uh, that injury didn't do, didn't do too much harm to the Rex and so that fully healed. But if you want to talk about arthritis, uh, look at that Tarbosaurus specimen that actually has uh, one of its toes. Uh, it has deteriorating bone on, on like I think a couple of the toe bones, and you see that they're almost kind of like almost deteriorating in a way, and I think that's a form of arthritis, and so that probably would actually say is that this animal is actually probably suffering from arthritis. Uh, a lot of prehistoric animals can actually have arthritis. Look at some of the saber-toothed cats that are actually found in the La Brea tar pits. They actually have. Uh, signs of arthritis so, so basically very old animals that probably got so beaten up uh, from hunting that they probably couldn't hunt anymore and so pretty much they actually had to go scavenge so certain uh, predatory dinosaurs would get arthritis because they actually would get so beaten up from from hunting and also confrontations with possibly for territory and for food but with like herbivorous dinosaurs, uh, yeah, they can have arthritis. It's probably more likely if that, like, say, uh, they've been, like, say, with that animal at being advanced in age, you know, like, say, really old age, like, probably, like, say, like, say, hadrosaur that's probably like living in its 50s could possibly actually uh, have some arthritis. Uh, sauropods, I don't really see that much in terms of arthritis, but they could happen to them, but they're big animals, but. Yeah, I do see dinosaur. I do see some uh, uh, pathologies that would suggest that dinosaurs did get arthritis. Brenda from Morris, New York, did hyenodon have a dog-like body? Um, I would probably say not really, because uh, 
when we look at the hyena don when we look at hyena don it, it's part of the creodontid family and so it's kind of a it's part of that carnivore uh, family in terms of mammals is just that they're not really related to dogs or cats whatsoever they're kind of like distant cousins of them and so those animals would probably be a little bit different because um, if you watch that uh, National Geographic uh, show called Prehistoric Predators there's an episode about Hyenodon and you actually saw a Hyenodon expert actually kind of go into a graphics uh, uh, person uh, from National Geographic to actually try to how to design the body of Hyenodon and when you look at Hyenodon it's got a massive skull uh, for its body and so if you actually gave it like say a wolf's body uh, so slender and all that that skull is gonna make that it's gonna put is gonna that skull is so big that pretty much the, it's gonna the gra gravity it would actually force that skull to go down and so pretty much that animal will just be walking on its front limbs most of the time but uh, I would but they use actually uh, Smilodon fatalis uh, body to actually put on to for the skull it's just that they just reduce the muscles and and of course they make it a, a much longer have give it a longer tail because hyenodon would actually have a much longer tail than a saber-toothed cat and so probably it would have like a mix of like say between a dog and a cat so probably not the retractable claws with the cat probably just have basic claws uh that you would see like on a dog uh but you probably have kind of like the agility of a cat but you know th those sort of things but of course hyenodons were probably not going to be super speedsters so they were probably going to be more likely on the ambush predator type of uh type of um, uh, niche uh, when it comes to being a predator. Benjamin from Hong Kong. Are Camptosaurus and Stegosaurus the most common Lake Jurassic Ornithians? Yes. They're found a lot uh, in the Morrison Formation. How long are the arms of Eotyrannus? It is unknown. Uh, Eotyrannus is still considered to be a small Tyrannosaurid uh, I would probably say that based with the size because you see small predators are actually tend to usually going to have longer arms for their body size because they can handle that um, from what I've known the holotype specimen was probably a juvenile but with possible with more specimens actually coming out it probably would actually say that that the arms would probably be close to probably would be pretty close to three feet so almost human arm type of size but but it's a small animal it's a smaller dinosaur so i'd probably say it could be a little bit smaller than that though but it's still unknown uh, is baryonyx the best known of all cretaceous european theropod dinosaurs uh yes and no uh there is um because uh baryonyx is found in um england or united kingdom island uh the main island of course uh some parts of northern europe uh but it's it's probably the most famous of them all the cretaceous theropod dinosaurs but i would probably say it, it might not be the most studied though but it's still up for debate of whether or not which one is actually the most studied but i think baryonyx is one of them and did displaytosaurus really appear in disney's dinosaur no it did not um the two uh, villainous uh, carnivores are actually Carnotaurus and Velociraptor. Velociraptor is just like a secondary villain in that movie, uh, whereas Carnotaurus is actually the main antagonist, the main villain of that movie because it's a big carnivore and all that. Um, if if there was like an early script of or like an early like screenplay. Uh, designed uh to actually have a tyrannosaur uh in that movie like say Displetosaurus, albertosaurus i mean i'm pretty sure they did thought about actually putting in a t-rex but i'm pretty sure that like the creators of that movie was like no let's not put in t-rex let's have a different dinosaur let's have a different big meat eating dinosaur in there and they chose carnotaurus because of like the skull the size of the thing you know and they were just like let's make that one the villain you know because it's actually it looks kind of pretty scary if you actually give it a lot of muscle and and 
possibly make it a little bit bigger than a T-Rex and so and all that but that that Carnotaurus is a little bit inaccurate in terms of like say it's oversized it's too muscular you know I mean that sort of thing I talked about that um in my Carnotaurus video last week and so you guys can actually take a look at that uh, video if you actually have the chance and so and so yeah Carnotaurus or, or Displetosaurus did not show up in Disney's Dinosaur all right, that's it for now, and uh, next week will actually be a special episode, so I'll let you guys know which prehistoric animal I'm going to talk about, and so stay tuned for that. Uh, just uh, make sure you see that on Facebook, on the Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris Facebook page, and uh, you can check that out. And uh, you can also you can still send me questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. Just go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, yes, you post your questions on the wall or in the comment section. But remember, keep your questions short to the point. Same thing with the YouTubers. Uh, feel free to leave leave your questions in the comment section because uh, I do read them all. And also for and also the YouTubers, feel free to like the videos and subscribe to the channel so that way it can, helps me out and also keeps the channel going as long as possible and I continue to make, give you more uh, paleontology information, especially with all the dino, new dinosaurs, new mammals, new reptiles, but so on and so forth, you know, of all the new things that are being discovered. And so you can actually keep up to date with that. And uh, like I said, keep your questions short and to the point. And you can also follow me on Twitter at C-S-G-R-A-L-L. That's my Twitter page. I post pretty cool stuff on there. Also, take care of the people around you. And also, for younger people out there, to make sure you listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you can have for good education. It's very important to have good education. So with a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now. And I'll see you guys next week.